everyone and welcome back to 27 Fox Place. During the growing season I have to add yard work to my to-do list. Of course most days I'd rather work outside than inside <laughs> but when the summer temperatures rise it becomes more of a chore so when the temperatures climb into the triple digits I have to put the housework on hold and get outside first thing in the morning. If I don't then the yard starts to get neglected. In order to limit the time that I spend in the yard I work in a different section of the yard each week and and I try to clean up and prune whatever needs the most attention that week. And this week I needed to get after this privet hedge. Normally I just give them a light trim but they've been growing up too high so I needed to spend a little extra time and give the tops a hard prune. The middle of summer isn't exactly the best time to do this. <laughs> All of the undergrowth that's exposed will start to burn in the sun and I had planned on pruning them back in the spring but I just never got around to it. I thought about waiting until the fall but I wanted to give them time to fill in and recover before winter. I usually try to give the privets a hard prune about once a year just to keep them in check. Today I needed to take off some of the height so that I can keep them from growing above the wall. But in order to do that I needed to get out the loppers and cut back the thicker branches that the trimmer can't get through. During the hottest days of summer, the overnight lows only get down into the 70s <laughs> and the temperatures quickly rise as soon as the sun comes up. And I would like to get finished up while the weather is still in the 80s, but we don't want to wake up the neighbors with all the noise. And we do try to exercise in the morning before it gets too hot. This morning we got outside and went for a walk, so by the time we got started on the yard work, it was almost 90 degrees and by the time we finished up, it was almost 100. I don't usually do a lot of cleaning on days when I work in the yard, <laughs> but there's usually a few things that I need to get done to get ready for the week ahead. There were still a few things left in my morning routine that I didn't get to, but I wanted to start in the kitchen because there's a few things that I needed to restock in the pantry. I have a few empty pantry jars that I ran through the dishwasher and I need to refill them so that I can put them away, but I needed to put them back together first. There are some cleaners that can discolor the metal rings that attach the lid to the jar and the rings can end up looking tarnished but they still work just fine. But I do like to maintain the silver color so I always like to remove them before I run them through the dishwasher. I know that you feel all alone in this world but you have to Put your trust into us and we will help you through Cause we only want what's best What is best for you I don't usually need to decant this much at one time. Normally I just empty a jar, wash it and refill it, but there are times like this when everything seems to run out at the same time. There are a lot of reasons to decant pantry foods. Of course keeping foods fresh is the biggest reason, but the uniform size saves space in the pantry and the uniform appearance and clear containers makes it much easier to find what I'm looking for. I make too many changes to the pantry items to make permanent labels. So 
so I use a paint pen to label the contents and the expiration dates. The ink wipes right off while it's wet, but once it dries, it stays put. I've used this pen on plastic lids and glass, and it washes right off with a little soap and water. It's a convenient and inexpensive way to make labels, so I'll be sure to leave a link in the description box in case you want to check that out. Salmon patties or salmon cakes are one of my favorite ways to eat salmon and I like to prep them in advance and store them in the freezer for a quick and easy lunch or dinner. I usually start by prepping the veggies because that's what takes the most time. The original recipe calls for bell peppers but I like to substitute mushrooms for the peppers and it's much better to brush the dirt off of mushrooms with a veggie brush, but I like to rinse them off with water. It's not the proper way to clean mushrooms, but it's just something that I do. Mushrooms are very absorbent, so I rinse them as quickly as possible and put them in a colander to drain off the water. I've shared this recipe before in a previous meal prep and I'll be sure to leave a link for this recipe in the description box, but I thought it would be a good idea to share it with you again from start to finish. This recipe is easy to make, but the most time consuming part of it is chopping up the veggies, but once that's done, everything comes together quickly. Once the veggies are all chopped up, it's time to start cooking. And to keep the veggies from sticking to the pan, I use enough oil to lightly coat the entire surface. I like to use avocado oil when I cook because it has a higher smoke point than olive oil, but coconut oil is another healthy option. In order to save time in the kitchen, I try to multitask as much as possible, and I always try to clean up as I go. So while I'm waiting for the onions to cook, I can put a few things away and chop up the parsley. The more I can get done before I finish cooking, the less I'll have to do after.
I'm going to season the salmon with some lemon juice and a little pepper and I'll add a little avocado oil to keep the salmon from sticking to the grill. Salmon only takes about 10 to 15 minutes to cook but you could save time and use canned salmon instead. I'm using sockeye salmon for this recipe. Wild caught salmon is much healthier than farm salmon and cold water salmon from the Pacific Ocean is the best option. While I'm waiting for the salmon to finish cooking, I can measure out the remaining ingredients. Because this is a grain-free recipe, it uses almond flour as a binding agent instead of breadcrumbs. This recipe calls for fresh parsley and fresh dill, but I didn't have any fresh dill on hand, so I'm using dry dill today. I like to use fresh herbs whenever I can, but if I don't have them on hand, then I just use dried herbs instead. Dried herbs don't have the same amount of flavor as fresh herbs, so whenever a recipe calls for fresh herbs that I don't have, I use half the amount of dried herbs that the recipe calls for. I'm not sure if that's the best conversion to use, <laughs> but that rule of thumb has always worked out well for me. When we wake, hear the birds and sing the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. It only takes about two days for the hummingbirds to empty out all these feeders. Most of the feeders are completely empty, so I made a batch of simple syrup for the hummingbirds early this morning. It's been sitting on the countertop cooling off, so now I just need to fill up the feeders. I've been experimenting with hibiscus powder to color the nectar. I haven't come up with a formula that works yet, <laughs> but I have found that it's much better to mix up the powder when the nectar is still hot. But this last batch I made was much too dark, so I'll let you know if I ever manage to work it out. It definitely isn't necessary to color the nectar. The birds will still come without it, but adding the color makes it a bit easier for me to see when the feeders are running low. The hummingbirds need to feed constantly to stay alive. So if the feeders run dry, they'll move on to greener pastures and I love watching the hummingbirds out the kitchen window So I try to make sure that they stay full I'm always tempted to run off and leave the kitchen sink full of dishes and deal with it later. <laughs> but my future self is never happy about that decision. <laughs> so I always try to clear out the sink before I leave the kitchen. Normally, I just run these pitchers through the dishwasher and I would much rather leave clean dishes drying on the rack than have dirty dishes in the sink.
Just when I thought I was done for the day, I remembered that I still had a load of laundry waiting for me in the dryer. <laughs> I try to fold laundry first thing in the morning before I get busy with other things because I tend to lose motivation as the day wears on. It's much easier to get everything out of the way early so I don't have to worry about it later in the day when I'm tired. But I'd much rather deal with the laundry in the afternoon than have to struggle with the yard work in the summer heat.
While I was folding the laundry and getting it put away, the salmon had plenty of time to cool off, so now I just need to mix all of the ingredients together. I don't like to over mix the salmon, so I mix up all the rest of the ingredients before I add the salmon, and it also helps to break up the salmon into smaller chunks. Then once I add the salmon, I mix everything until the salmon is incorporated, but I can still see small chunks of salmon in the mix. It's too hot to turn on the oven, so I'm going to fry the patties up in a pan. I add a little bit of oil to the pan before I add the frozen patties. It only takes about 10 minutes per side if they're not frozen, but it does take a little bit longer to cook when they're frozen. So I lower the heat to about medium and then cover the patties with the lid. You could cook the patties in the oven or an air fryer. If you wanted to bake them in the oven, you could heat the oven to about 400 degrees and then cook them for about 10 to 12 minutes on each side for about 20 minutes but it'll take a little bit longer if they're frozen once the patties are done cooking I like to top them with a few slices of avocado and a dollop of sour cream and it's my absolute favorite way to eat salmon Once I got the patties into the freezer, there wasn't a lot left to do. I just needed to wipe down the countertops and load the dirty dishes into the dishwasher. But because I had run the dishwasher earlier in the day, I needed to empty it so that I could finish up. I've been told 
They never seem to clean my mind mm, This road that I am on I gotta stay here for some time mm, That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and remember to hit that subscribe button and to turn on the notifications before you go. Thank you so much for joining me today and I hope to see you next time.